So forget those meta aggro decks. I'm totally tearing up the ladder today with this unbeaten Simic aggro brew. It's the deck you need to play if you want to rank up fast. Hey everyone, Hex here, and spoiler alert, I'm unbeaten with this sweet, sweet Simic aggro deck. You gotta try it out as it's a lot of fun to play, as it's aggro but not in the normal sense that we're all used to. Let's jump right into the cards though and see what's a brewing today, starting with the unblockables. We get to plow full all those 1 1 tokens with Ginger Brute, Surge Engine, and newly added Cryptic Coat. The Brute and Engine start off small, but we're gonna make them really big as the game goes on, so bear with me. The Cryptic Coat though is amazing. It's a 3 mana artifact that, as it ETBs, cloaks the top card of your library, meaning you get to play the top card for free as a face down creature, but most importantly, it is unblockable. This strategy is gonna be key today for us to outmaneuver any blockers and go under those pesky tokens we might be up against. So to complement our artifact beatdown, we have Teething Wormlet, which just gets bigger when an artifact ETBs for the first time on your turn, plus it quickly gains death touch. We've got Zoetic Glyph, which turns an artifact into a 5-4 creature. We're gonna get lots of tokens for you to do that with today, but how about you target your Ginger Brute for an unblockable 5-4? I'm running a new card in case of the Filch Falcon. I'm quietly impressed with this one as it ETBs you get a clue and when you have 3 artifacts it solves. Then for 3 mana at instant speed you get to put 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters on a non-creature artifact you control and it becomes a creature and then it gains flying. It's amazing. I'm playing Spygar Siren to gain a map token and Schooner for some amazing attacks. We have plenty of creatures to crew it with too and we've also playing Tough Cookie. When it ETBs you get a food token, then for 3 mana you can turn a non-creature artifact you control into a 4-4 until end of turn. Like I said, we make so many tokens so these cards are just going to blow out your opponents. I've got Sentinel to make lots of map tokens and I'm running Kellen. It's pretty sweet as it has an adventure sorcery that makes a clue token. Then you get to play an extra mana that turn if you have one, hopefully allowing you to follow up with a one drop. Then its creature side is a 3-4 flying vigilant human fairy detective that when it attacks you destroy a target artifact. If you own that artifact, you draw a card. Finally, a card that has both won me games today in offense and defense, and that's Repulsive Mutation. It's a counter spell for X and one green, one blue. You put X plus one plus one counters on target creatures you control, then counter up to one spell unless your opponent pays mana equal to the highest power among creatures you control. It's basically always a hard counter spell for us, but, and it's a big but, you don't have to counter a spell. Load up your surge engine with counters and just swing in for lethal. It is pretty bonkers. I've got 22 lands today, which you may want to add one more to that, and uh, that's the deck. Okay, so this deck has blown me away. It's very hard to go undefeated these days on the ladder and this deck did it. If you want to play aggro but not with red, this is the deck for you. Don't forget our food tokens can sacrifice for life and the clues can sacrifice for cards. So you get to be offensive or defensive and I think we are a bit of a pain for anyone to want to play against. Let me know what you think though. Whilst you're doing that, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, then smash that like button. Your support means the world to this channel and I'll catch you again in the next video. All right then, on the draw, and our hand here is pretty sweet. We have one, two, and three mana plays for our first few turns. We draw a Wormlet, and I think that's an even better turn one play here, so we will take a damage to drop this onto the battlefield. So I love this deck. It's, um, I love the fact we are so aggressive, but we do a lot of unblockable damage to our opponent, which is quite difficult against for token decks, for example, to deal with. They're playing 1-1s one to block our big creatures. We get to go through those. Opponent with a war leader's call, so. Shows what kind of deck they're on. But yeah, we get to attack here for four. Sentinel, three, four. Makes map tokens. But the Wormlet here is gonna get Death Touch possibly next turn, opponent with an Adeline, which we could Ottawara in fact, we could beside you the call. Opponent looks like they've got something in their hand, though. There was a little bit of stick there. Um, I think we'll just double spell here the two surge engines. Attack with our wormlet. Then uh, next turn, we can set ourselves up for another massive attack with one of our unblockables. So we'll just attack with the wormlet here. I guess I should have attacked with the sentinel. It would have made a map token. 
Would have been pretty bad though if the opponent blocked and they had like a play with fire, so it doesn't matter too much to me. I uh, think we're in a decent shape here as they play a Brutal Cathar to nab our. They've gone for the Wormlet. Okay. Well, I think we can fire off next turn this Zoetic Glyph that's in our hand. And we can, yeah, we just make our Ginger Brew unblockable here. Then we can Zoetic Glyph the Ginger Brew, and it will become a 5 4. And this is a big attack for us. They can't do anything about the Ginger Brew. Guess we'll just attack with the Sentinel this time to make a map token. The Sentinel here is not going to be a way for it's not going to be a creature that's going to do any damage to the opponent. But the Zoetic Glyph next turn on to uh, one of our Surge Engines is going to be pretty nice too. So I like where we are. We just got to not die. I don't think they can do 21 damage to us in one turn, but you never know. And no, they scoop it up. They see the writing on the wall there. All right, on the draw with a hand of permanence that I really like, but our land situation here is pretty bad. Going to keep it though. You never know, we might find some lands along the way. Opponent with a Gruel Manor. But yeah, we don't have a turn one play, which is pretty bad in a deck when we have lots of turn one plays. And they come out with a Fugitive Codebreaker, 2-1 Prowess Haste. All right, are they gonna out aggro our aggro deck? I think we'll play the Wormlet here, and it's pretty obvious that they are the beatdown deck. So we're just gonna try and Soak up as much damage as possible. Make them play their spells. And then just see where we end up. Cavern of Souls is a bit annoying as we have mutation in our hands. But we can do about it. Going to block with the Wormlet. If they've got spells, they've got spells. Again, we have to do something. We can't just not do anything. Otherwise, they'll just keep plugging away at our life total here. So unfortunately, the Wormlet bites the dust. Still no land. I guess we can block. Uh, we can uh, play the two flyers here. So I don't know what order I'm going to put these videos up, but currently on a seven and O winning streak with this deck. I only played it seven times, so haven't lost ever with this deck. Sitting in diamond at the minute. This is the eighth game, by far the hardest game so far. They are out aggro in us and uh, there's not much we can do about it. We don't actually have any removal in the deck outside of a copy of Ottawara. We're meant to be making lots of big creatures, blocking theirs, so... See how we get on here. I think the best thing to do in this turn is to play this Sentinel. It gives us enough toughness for at least one of our creatures to survive if we triple block this Codebreaker. Which at the moment is exactly what I'm going to do. It is a 5-2 with Trample, Prowess. And our life total is 7, so we can't risk this one. We'll double block, triple block, sorry. And it is Giant Growth, okay. So they do eat all of our creatures, but we stay alive. We're on 4. They're down to 3 cards left. And uh, this Glyph is a nice card, so let's hopefully hope that this one can uh, kill off this Goblin if it attacks us. They would, I guess, get one damage through, which puts us in lightning strike range, but we've got to do something. So yeah, we go down to three. We get to discover three as the glyph has now gone to the graveyard and we discover into a surge engine. Okay, cool. One of our better creatures is definitely one of our win conditions in the deck when we make that unblockable. Start jamming with it. Let's find another surge engine. Okay, well, we'll play this one. And I think it's at the point where we can't just sit back and not do anything. So we'll make this Surge Engine unblockable here and uh, we'll get in there for three damage. Now, if they have a burn spell to our face, I think that they would have already played it. So they would top deck that and that's just the way it goes. Samut. Sure, two, three. First strike, vigilance, haste. And uh, when a creature enters the battlefield, this turn does damage to your opponent. 
they draw a card. So I guess we are going to say goodbye to our surge engine here. Creatures are slightly outpowered by our opponents. Giant Growth is a strange play for them because the Samet was already going to kill our Surge Engine unless I'm missing something. But we get to play a Wormlet here and this is going to get Death Touch which is nice because we control three artifacts and we gain a life. There we go, we gain a life, we're out of Lightning Strike range. And this turn we definitely can't attack. They have a Creature Land available up there. So we might be having to sacrifice our creatures again. But luckily we got a couple in our hand. And uh, I guess they're just jamming. They're jamming with both. So Ridgeline gives plus two plus oh two at target creature and it untaps. No trample though. I thought it gave trample. All right, Wormlet. Wormlet we're going to have to use to kill off their Ridgeline. Otherwise that's just going to keep coming at us every turn. And the schooner I'm going to use to block Samut. I prefer the surge engine alive because the schooner needs a creature just to even block with. So, fortunately, our schooner is dead because their Samut was a four power creature. So, what are we on? We're on four mana. The surge engine costs three to turn to a five four. But we could just use our map tokens here to make it a 5-4 instead. Schooner on top. A nice card, but we need creatures for it to crew with. And at the moment, our creatures are just being used as blockers. So probably best put that away. Even though we could leave it on the top to map again to make sure that we have a, another counter to go on the engine. But I think we're digging for something a bit better. Gingerbrute's nice. We'll keep Gingerbrute. Even though Ginger Brute, being an unblockable creature to non-haste creatures, are not so great against Sammer. And uh, opponent has a Kamano here, so we're back in Lightning Strike range. We do have Repulsive Mutation open for five mana they would have to pay to um, pay for the counter spell. Okay. Well, there's our Brute. So again, if they've got a burn spell, I think they would have already played it. And whilst Kamano is only sitting on its first chapter, they may want to be playing a big creature this turn that we might want to mutate. So just the Ginger Brute here. No attacks just yet. Hmm, maybe we could have attacked with the Surge Engine there to get some damage through. Another Cavern of Souls for our opponent. Not sure why they named Assassin. Alright, well. Making our Surge Engine unblockable 7-6 now. Mirix token's nice. Or Mirix land is nice. And we can get some damage through here with the Surge Engine. And I think this is our opportunity here to do something. We will Cryptic Coat. And the card that's been cloaked here is a Schooner. So we'll keep that at 3-2. So we actually have lethal on board. The 7-6 and the 3-2 are both unblockable. And if they attack with both, I'm still going to put both my creatures in front of theirs because I worry about the, like, a monstrous rage. Well, we don't have... I, I was trying to hold open the repulsive mutation mana there, but we don't actually have that. Because Mirex was the one that was untapped. I think if I did that turn again, we could have sacrificed the Brute for some life there. Instead of the Cryptic Coat. But this is a sweet play. We can Repulsive Mutate here for um, three. Attack our opponent. There does not need to be a spell on the stack to counter. And uh, we've just gone 8 and 0 oh against uh, this very difficult opponent. <laughs> Alright, on the play. Okay, so this hand is... Okay. We don't actually have blue mana on turn two unless we play this cascade on turn one. And I really want to get this schooner down as quick as possible. So contrary to normal gameplay, I'm actually going to play the tap land first. This means next turn we can definitely get the schooner down. 
and then the following turn we can play the sentinel and attack with the schooner yeah so get the schooner down here i think this opponent with a dissident here okay so it looks like we could be up against a mirror match uh, cryptic coat is one of our better cards we'll keep that one all right wormlet it's your turn now Ooh, a schooner and we will attack our opponent yeah, the Cryptic Coat is going to stay on top as we hit the opponent down 17. All right, so the reason I think it's a mirror match is Yoshin Dissident does get bigger and bigger with artifacts, although they are looking like they're on a Bant version. And there's a Wormlet. Okay, so same card as us. So this is going to be fun. Automaton. Okay, a card not in our deck, mainly because there's it requires cast triggers, and we don't have, actually have too many artifacts that are cast. Okay, so we are, we're going to try and be the beat down here because I think our unblockable creatures might be able to get us over the line. Play the Cryptic Coat here. Makes our Wormlet a 3-3. And uh, we can actually crew up the Schooner with the face down card here, which is Kellen. Okay, so that's a flyer we could use later on. Attack our opponent here for 6. They don't block. They go down to 12. Okay, so they've got a free attack here. But I don't even care if they want to tap out to attack us. Kadama, okay. Kadama is going to make them um, get 2 lands here as the modified creatures that do damage and grab lands from your deck. It's a cool card to put in. I didn't think about anything like Kadama in this deck. But it only works with the modified creatures, so probably isn't that great in our deck. As some of our creatures are just attacking as unblockable artifacts. So just counting the mana here, making sure we have enough to what we want to do. Beside you is, I mean we could play a sentinel here, but let's see if they do what I think they're going to do. We will attack with the unblockable creature and the schooner. And we'll see if they want to double block our schooner here. And they do. I knew they would. So we can beside you away the automaton and take care of both their creatures. It does give them a land, but getting Kadama off the battlefield is important to me. So yeah, we could have played the Sentinel pre-combat, which would have put a counter on the Wormlet. But I don't see the need to do that. Getting Kadama off is important. And uh, we don't lose any of our creatures. We have a Wormlet on defense here. So yeah, opponent's got quite a lot of land to play with. And it is the Mightstone and Wheatstone. Okay, so they're going to take out one of my creatures here. They've gone for the Wormlet. Fair enough. Now, do they attack? That is a question. Our face down card is pretty sweet at the moment with Ward 2 as well. So they are flooding the board here with creatures, whole bunch of triggers. But maybe we could just use the face down card to win us the game and use the rest of our creatures as blockers. They are gaining light, a lot of life with the Wormlet. They've gone in with their 4-4. Four, four. Nope. You've got to attack with that 4-4, four, four, no? Okay, just the 2-2. Two, two. Okay, big turn for us here, I think. I think we'll just unleash our hand as best as possible and attack with our 3-2. And gain a life back. So this cryptic coat is definitely a card that I think I think is the best blue card from the new set, in my eyes anyway. I just think it's so much value when you are stuck with in sort of the end of the game where you've got not much you can do. Just finding creatures out of nowhere and being able to constantly put that cryptic coat cloak back it coat back into your hand is pretty cool. 
Luckily it is an artifact which means there's a nice synergy in our deck here. And uh, opponent with Urza. Okay, so are they going to meld Urza and the Mightstone and Wheatstone? I haven't seen that for a good minute here. I think I did that in the early access event of that particular set and haven't really done any melding since. They get in there for seven. So they are offering the trade Wormlet on Wormlet. And I think I'm going to take it. I don't really want them gaining too much more life every time an artifact ETBs. Plus killing their 4-4 four four has got to be good. And a Siren for us. Okay, so we can at the moment block for days, but their Urza is going to be a problem. So I guess we just jam with everything. We'll play the Siren here. That can crew the Schooner. Zoetic Glyph can hit with the map token from last turn, which was... Yeah, we can map token. We can use the map token we've just created onto our siren here. I guess the schooner's better because it puts it. Um, it attacks harder, and they would have to double block it. Attack our opponent with the team and see where we get to, because Urza's gonna destroy us if um, they manage to meld. But they're gonna have to do a lot of blocks here. Let's see where this goes. Oh, opponent scoops it up. I think that might have been a little bit premature, but we'll take the win. Alright, on the play. And yeah, it's a good hand here. Um, have to lead with a tap land, unfortunately. Ottawara, okay, well that would be our fourth mana, which I will happily take. Scoured Barons for our opponent. So, do we play Ottawara or do we play Beside You here? Let's go for the Beside You. If they're on some kind of white black deck I doubt with any enchantments we really want to take out maybe an ossification later on but we have plenty of creatures every single turn and they are surveilling with meticulous archive okay so we've got a free attack here it would seem unless they've got a cut down in their hand so let's let's use Kellen here let's tail the suspects just so that we can ramp away attack our opponent and uh, we'll just pass the turn. Could have played the Sentinel there, but I think that was a nice little way to use Kellen's adventure ability. Opponent with Amalia. So they are a life gain deck. Lots of life gain decks around at the moment. So it looks like we're going to have to do more than 20 damage to kill this opponent. All right, so what do we want to do on this turn? Teeming Wormlet is nice as it's bigger than their Amalia. They can't gain life at instant speed, so I think we'll just play the Sentinel here and we can attack our opponent for the uh, Wormlet. I am going to not attack with Gingerbrew as I'm going to hold open this Repulsive Mutation. At the moment, X equals zero means the opponent has to pay four to resolve their spell. And I think a counter spell right now is way more important than the one damage that Gingerbrew would do. So they have a lot of life gain lands to activate their Amalia. They have a Lunar Veteran that they've put into the graveyard. Okay. I would have expected them to have played that card. All right, Rafine. No, we will um, cast the Repulsive Mutation at X equals zero. Make sure you target the spell in the stack. And this time, this turn, we can attack our opponent for a whole bunch here. We'll make our, we could make our Ginger Brute unblockable. Smash our opponent. Surge Engine's a nice card as well, as that puts a, another counter on the Wormler. And then Surge Engine will be unblockable as well when we get a chance to attack with that one. So we'll hit the opponent here for 9. They go down to 5. And this is a huge attack. And opponent takes it all. Fair enough. So what are they going to do this turn? I mean, there's plenty of spells that they could have to get themselves back in this game. 
So the life gain they've got has kind of kept them alive a little bit. Okay, opponent has been thinking for a long time. I don't know if they're actually there. But we are going to see out this game by making our Surge Engine unblockable. And uh, that is a Zoetic Glyph. And uh, I guess we just smash our opponent. There is the possibility that they are actually there. And they're just hoping that we make a mistake. So we'll just attack our opponent for everything. I mean, they could have a Wandering Emperor. And in fact, Wandering Emperor would be annoying because they could take out the Wormlet, then block the Sentinel and not die. But looks like they have disconnected and they are dead. All right, then on the play with a pretty bad hand land wise here with a Mirax token that can cast one spell on our opening turn. And then after that, pretty bad. Um, this hand is much better. We'll get to see our case of the filched falcon here. And I think the sentinel is the card I can't really afford right now. So we'll put that one away, even though it's one of our better cards. Play our tap land. And a Surge Engine. Okay, well, opponent with a Forest. So, pretty slow start for us, but we get to play our Teeving Wormlet here. We get to play Case of the Filched Falcon. So, this enters the battlefield, it investigates. When you have three or more artifacts, it can solve. Then it can turn one of your artifacts for three mana at instant speed into a 4-4 four, four Flyer. So, a pretty nice card. Playing a couple of them in this deck. You don't have to play this card, but I actually have had quite decent luck with it, so pretty happy with that. Opponent is on mono green, it looks like, so I think right now we can just smash with the Zoetic Glyph. If they play like black mana or something and they want to start killing our creatures, fair enough, but we can do a whole ton of damage to the opponent right now. Another semi seven damage here. Down to 13. See what they can do to get out of this little pickle. Problem with mono green, if you don't have any early plays, is that you do end up taking a bit of damage. They bushwhack looking for forest, so maybe it is just a mono green deck. And they pass the turn, so we find a sentinel. Okay, well, let's just drop the sentinel. Tap the opponent for another seven. I guess it's eight because the wormlet is going to get a counter on it. No, they've got something in their hand over there. I can't think what it could be for just um, green mana. Maybe it's a protection spell to gain some life. They go down to five and... Yeah, there's no way they're getting out of this, is there? Nope. The opponent scoops this one up. Alright, on the draw here. And yeah, this hand is... Pretty sweet for us, actually. We are going to get the Case of the Filch Falcon activated pretty quickly, I think. Put it with a Fang of Shigeki. So we'll go for our Yavimaya Coast here. And let's play the Case of the Filch Falcon. We'll let them attack us. We'll take some damage from this 1-1. One -one. In fact, it being tapped might be quite good for us, actually. Oh, they have a second one. And that is a Zoetic Glyph, so I think we'll play Kellen here. We get to play a land for free, investigate, and then play the Siren, which is going to create another token. And that finally uh, activates our case of the Filch Falcon. <laughs> Opponent does not like that one, and they scoop that one up. 